whoever sits here and says, you're not touching my tree, I have no legal right to touch that tree. We can't touch the tree. Now, I can put a little pressure on your neighbor to tell them that if that tree causes an outage and causes damage, they're paying for that through their homeowner's insurance and stuff. Sometimes that gets people to move a little bit, but you really have to understand that on private property, those trees belong to you, and we're pretty much stuck. We're both going to give it a shot. The problem we're running is again, to pull the wires through. We have to go through those same trees, and a lot of times we've got to trim them. Your, your same name didn't want to be trimmed for the wire that's here now. Definitely doesn't want to be trimmed for the new wires. So, but it's, I'll give you the card and you can take a look. Alright? Good evening, everyone. My name is John. I'm looking for you, Paul. Uh, this is, uh, I'm proposing not a question so much as a solution to a problem. And uh, the people on the there are people on the stage which are coming for more than wanting to hear them. But Marty, this is more of a to what somebody might be able to do. Um, talking about making New York City safe, I think say it again. Um, what I'd like to bring up is the frustration that people are facing with uh, traffic lights and stop signs is making drivers more and more reckless every day. More drivers are going through stop signs and traffic lights than ever before. Uh, there's a comedian on television that talks about the stop signs of Italy, and he says there's suggestions. And that's really what we're facing here also. Uh, we have drivers that drive a block or two on the wrong side of the street. And I've witnessed with this as many times, I'm sure, as all of you. Uh, drivers who go through block lines at 40 miles an hour to say a wrong traffic line. I was almost running out of the donuts on my block myself by somebody who's doing at least 30 miles an hour coming through the park. What I'm suggesting is this, is that the lights on all the avenues in New York City be staggered. The speed limit in New York City is 30 miles an hour. Stagger the lights or cars to 25 miles an hour. But at least they keep moving. Now I'd like to bring up too, there's a sign on the corner of Road at East 16th Street that states that there's a $2,000 fine if you want off for more than three minutes. And I think that's there for the bus drivers. Now this is made to say energy and heat pollution down. When cars go light to light, block to block, here in, in, in Brooklyn, half, the, half of our trip is spent idling. We're sitting in our cars waiting for the lights to change. Now what I'm suggesting again is that the lights be staggered. Because if this would not only save lives, it would reduce pollution, and I'm sure we would save millions of gallons of fuel a year. Thank you very much. Believe it or not, they are staggered in different locations going into the city and into the city at different points of the day and in different communities. If you have a specific area where you believe staggering is a uh, lights can increase uh, or decrease speeding and increase flow, um, we'd be interested in helping with that to occur. Because I think that's a good way of reducing I'll be back to you guys in a second. I just got to go around the room, be on the back in that direction in a minute. Thanks, Senator Wall. <coughs> uh, my name is Chris. Uh, I just wanted to very quickly just bring the conversation back to solar and then ask the Senator a question. I think that um, solar power relates to some of the other subjects that have been brought up, maybe more so than most people would understand. Uh, New York City has really maybe this is one of the strongest rationales for, for solar in the entire country because our electricity rates are so high. They're about double the national average. But it's also a good public policy to encourage more solar in New York City because it actually operates at the time when we're most likely to have blackouts. So if you actually have more solar in areas that are prone to having failure, that's power that's produced right when blackouts are most likely to happen. It doesn't have to move through the electricity grid. Right now, in, in spite of New York's you know, great rationale for adopting solar, we're getting lapped by a lot of other states, not just California, but also New Jersey. New Jersey is, uh, is far exceeding New York in terms of the amount of uh, solar that it's installing. 
And I sort of did an excellent job administering the program uh, that, that we have here in New York, but the overall amount of resources are smaller than really what we need in order to make this industry really actually happen here in New York. So I'm wondering if, if the senator has uh, considered any of the legislation that's been introduced recently that would help expand uh, the solar program here in New York State. The, uh, there was a solar bill up and up, there was an increased jobs bill. It did get passed in the state senate the other day, I did not vote for it. It will go to the assembly very, very shortly, and there will be a legislation that will be passed. And that's the bill I think that you're speaking of. Uh, solar is a good um, way of uh, bringing energy costs down, but if we're going to do it at a tune of a cost of hundreds of millions of dollars to the taxpayer, at the end of the day, we just can't pass those costs on. So I believe we have to move in that direction, but we have to be, as I think the individual Con Edison uh, said, you know, we can't bring that electricity into the ground, but I'm hoping that there is some plan to bring some of that electricity. Is there any plan to bring some of that electricity into the ground? In the future? No? All right. No. Because it was, and I think that was some of the problem with that bill that you, I think that's the specific bill you're looking at. Is that the, if I can have an opportunity after this meeting to maybe speak to you just actually about it. That's the one you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you can speak about it, Victoria. Sure. Uh, yeah, this, this bill actually did pass. It was newly uh, introduced. Uh, and it also relates to another problem that was brought up is that one of the reasons why electricity rates are so high in New York City is because of what you mentioned, the inability to bring electricity from other parts of, of the region. There's, there's constraints. So if you look at the options that we have to generate electricity in New York City, you know, how easy is it to build a power plant in New York City right now? It's not high on people's uh, uh, agenda in terms of what their priority is, but at the same time, we can't pull as much as we, as we want from outside. Solar power, again, We've got almost a million square feet of space in the city, and you can put it all throughout the city, and it would actually make a meaningful impact. Because again, it operates by the use the greatest amount of electricity. So just to quickly wrap up, the bill, there's a couple of them that have been introduced. The one that we're talking about is one that has a jobs focus. It's estimated 20,000 jobs we produce from it. So it's very labor, locally intensive. Uh, but that the overall amount of economic activity would also be somewhere between about $20 million. So it, it, it's, it's economically, it would, it would be a plus. But why don't we, I don't want to bore everybody with the detail, but we can, uh, we can talk about it in the afternoon. Chris is half right. It, it, it is and it does, but it's not tax we forget that it's into the obvious. Many half years before we start to see the return. Oh, you see we're it right at, now? You're talking at 2025. Not at so <laughs> We can discuss that, though. I'd love to. All right. I'd like to add to that also, um, not only do we promote solar PV, which is a standard solar that most people understand, but there's also a new technology called solar thermal, which is creating hot water using solar power. The panels are a different uh, technology, and so it's a lot cheaper to do that, So, but that's another way to use solar to reduce your energy use and it's uh, a little more cost effective. But before you do so, we encourage you to make your home as energy efficient as possible. And Paul had talked about the tax incentives. Uh, right now, the federal tax incentives for making your home energy efficient run out at the end of this year, but the solar tax incentives go on for another four or five years. So we encourage you, and again, uh, we have information in the back about programs. And the average savings is about 30%. Reduce your energy bills by about 30 percent by coming through the home performance with the energy star program, which is a one to four band program. Hi, um, we've been talking a lot about solar, but is wind also covered? Yes, wind is um, we call it's more difficult to do. Though. It's it's smaller on the on the small scale level. Well, no, I'm talking about some small scale technology that's seen in place now. Aggregators on top of malls and things like that. Um, and my other question is for you, Mr. Goldman. Um, has anyone else been complaining about flood insurance rates? I have a bill um, this year for fifteen hundred dollars, and flood insurance went up for two hundred last year. Um, say that again, the question? Flood insurance on my house. Flood insurance on your house. Yes. Do you have Wall State? What do you have? Yes. You have Wall State. Okay, let me take the mic back. You're the uh, <laughs> You're dropping people like flies. 
If you can contact my office, I will have, uh, we just had a meeting with all stakeholders.